Good morning guys, Chris the Ultimate Recycler. We have another project on the go today in between unboxing videos. I have to do a little bit of work at home making a gate. Let's go for a walk and I'll show you what I've got to do. Okay, as we make our way out of the shed, uh, we have a, another dog here at the moment. Um, Christine's son Luke's staying with us and he has a dog. So let's walk out here and we have a walkway up to our deck beside our studio which is all well and good and we have a deck with a glass fence around it and this dog his name is Caesar he'll come to see us in a minute uh, makes a hell of a mess you know and Coco fights yeah well they play they don't fight they get on really well but the trouble is that they end up any of you that have got big dogs know that they can make a place look like a rubbish tip in no time so I want to put a gate here uh, and of course I want to use recycled materials as much as I can so a while ago, I, uh, Kristen and myself saved some floorboards from an old cottage. They've been stacked around the back. I'll link that video up the top now. And this is what I thought I'd do, is just create a nice old style farm gate, like a shearing shed gate, uh, out of these rustic old floorboards. And they will make a perfect dog barricade for that area so that we can kick the dogs out the backyard and not leave them destroy our deck and Christine's over here has their full attention morning Christine good morning and we have Caesar Rachel. who's focused on a treat and ah, Coco always loves her treats and Rachel. this is a challenge feeding two dogs at once so what breed is Caesar again? A Carna Corso. A Carna Corso is some type of Mastiff, Central. I believe. Yes, an, he, Italian mastiff. an Italian Mastiff. Uh, he has the head the size of a watermelon and probably it's the same Central. sort of mush inside, we think, Boy. although Boy. He, he's a sweet dog and certainly very, very friendly. And Coco absolutely loves him. They play all the time. But the deck is becoming a bit of a war zone. And being a male dog, Caesar likes to water everything, which is a bit of a worry. Well, it just it's really hard to keep things neat and clean. So this will be the gate project I'll be getting started on today. Okay, back to this gate. I'm thinking I'll hinge it off this post, uh, mainly because this post is actually out from the wall, so that's not going to work very well. Um, so it won't matter if the gate hinges back into the garden area here. I'm going to use hinges that just have a, a peg just a peg out and up and another one at the top so that and then the gate will have just a loop that sits over it so I can actually lift the gate off if I want to it's going to be pretty heavy because this hardwood's quite quite dense and I'm going to use a lot of it uh, and I'll have to notch a bit out of the bottom of the gate to allow for that um, border piece there and I think then I'll have it just swing hard against this pole and some sort of latch on the back side of it so that it can swing out and then we can remove it if we want to and we'll probably go up to the same height as the glass panelling so all I've got to do at this stage now is measure my lengths of timber basically from the edge of this pole um, to the tin wall and then I'll do the uprights from the floor up to the same height as this glass panelling and once we get them all cut and reasonable, reasonably square ends on them. I've got to round up some bolts and I'll bolt it together and then I've got to do a couple of cross braces to give the gate some stability so it doesn't sag. So I'll have one cross brace on each side. Um, so yeah, it should be really good. It will be quite heavy but it'll look nice and rustic. I'm not planning on painting it. I think this old hardwood, it's a hundred plus year old hardwood. I think if we give it some deck oil or something it'll look nice and rustic. Uh, and it won't need painting, I think it'll match in nicely. So I've done enough sawing for now, just give my shoulder a rest, it's feeling alright actually. Uh, this is what the corners of the gate, the corner, all four corners of the gate are going to look like. The uprights are sandwiched in the cross piece. I'm just trying to work out how many bolts I need. I was thinking just one in each, but then that would allow the whole frame to actually um, diagonally pivot. Even with the stay, I reckon it'll be stronger if we have two bolts in each. So two by, we have six horizontal boards, so that's 12 bolts down one side, 12 bolts down the other, and then I think six individual bolts on the diagonal through each board. 
so 30 bolts and I've just measured that we've got 75 mil so I want to get some bolts that obviously have enough room just for a, a nice big flat washer and a nut um, uh, so as long as we have 75 mil of the shank through the wood it should be good I had considered using some of these old T-hinges and I've got quite a lot of them however I don't think they're going to carry the weight of the gate without sagging and it's just relying on wood screws into those uh, the support posts of the deck which are only modern timber so I don't think the wood screws would hold it and plus I said I'd like it to be removable so this is sort of something I had in mind uh, unfortunately I can only find one of these so we're going to the hardware later today I might be able to buy something uh, I did want to reuse what I had here but it would take me two or three days to try and find stuff or, or make stuff so I think I'm better off just buying some hinges and I'm going to have to buy some bolts too because I can't find a large tin full of uh, coach bolts there's some more hinges in here but these are the big T hinges again uh, that's the trouble with having have moved all my stuff is I can't find a lot of things but we'll keep these ones for another project in the future and I'll have to buy some some bolts and some hinges for this gate so I found a nice shady spot in the yard and I'm just cleaning these boards up a bit there is the remains of some old glue I'm not going to go to too much trouble but I'm just scraping them back so that there's no splinters or nasty bits of stuff stuck to them I want them to look rough and rustic uh, and even nail holes there's a couple of old nails still in them which is perfectly fine I do have to scrape the edges because between these boards there is at least a hundred years of grime because they were in the cottage from original and the cottage dated to about the 1880s so a lot of history between these boards I don't really want the history as far as dirt and dust go but uh, there's some beautiful old sawmilling marks on these boards that they probably were cut out in the bush at a, uh, a timber mill back in the very early days I don't know what timber they are if you recognize the timber let me know it's certainly a hardwood we'll get a bit of a picture of the end grain um, it's very hard it's quite heavy and dense I'm not sure if they're an iron bark or, or an ash but uh, lovely old timber it's going to last for many many years and it's great to give it another life it's the next morning and I'm continuing to clean these boards up now I left a couple outside last night and just the moisture on the lawn actually um, removed or made this white stuff quite sticky I think this is glue uh, and there was another off cut here that has definite signs of glue on it and I don't really want that on the boards uh, and it clearly is water soluble I scrubbed that center part and you can see it actually came right back to the timber so rather than actually scrape them uh, well I've scraped them over just to remove any obvious stuff but I think I'm going to give them a bit of a scrub and wash them and I'm not worried about old splatters from when the house was painted uh, I like that character I like the roughness of that board but I think we should get rid of all the white because even though it, it kind of has a nice sort of shabby look the 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 worn white paint look because I know it's water soluble now uh, when the thing rains it's likely to leave white drops on the deck and stain the deck so I think I'll wash all that back uh, back off and get just to the raw timber and that'll be a great finish and here's one I have washed up and let dry in the sun and it's a beautiful finish it's well worn it's got some some sort of smooth parts where it's obviously had a lot of foot traffic if you look at the back of it that's pretty well untouched from the day it was milled because that was just basically facing underneath the house you can see all the circular saw marks in there so I think that's a really nice rustic look so we'll wash the rest of them up and then we can look at start setting it out uh, drilling some holes and bolting the mainframe together all washed up now that glue dissolved really easily so I'm glad I cleaned it off now so I'll leave them to dry, put them back up on the deck uh, and we're supposed to rain later today so I've got this job done just in time. Okay so we went and bought some hinges yesterday and I've got these sort which I think will be good. Uh, they're a galvanized hinge. I even toyed with the idea of making them rusty just so they look rustic but I think they'll be fine and eventually they'll probably rust anyway. So I've got a couple of clamps here just working out how we're going to have this gate I've changed my plan from hinging it on this side and I'm thinking 
my main reason was that I think I'd like the gate to sit within the poles rather than across the end of that pole. Um, we've just been discussing, both Kristen and I like things to look... What's the word? Symmetrical. Symmetrical, yes. So to have the gate fit neatly within those two poles would look really nice. If I had it going past that pole to the shed with the cross beam on the gate sort of going behind the pole, I think it would look a little bit out of place, as if it's a big gate trying to fit into a small space. So, and of course, then it would sit on the back of these poles, and it's going to be quite a thick gate, as you can see by these three pieces of timber sandwiched together. So we're just experimenting with some clamps uh, with a couple of offcuts, and if we have it there, it will sit inside the post. So it'll look quite neat inside both the posts, and we'll have to put a stop so it sort of can latch somewhere here and when we open it out it will open round if I space it off the main hinge part a little bit it will open round behind the pole about that much so that won't get in the road of the walkway too much it'll hit go back against the shed uh, I think that will work fine but Kristen has another idea so we're going to just rejig the clamps and see if it works Perhaps with the hinge even around the corner more. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Let's have a look. So this is option B, I guess, which kind of... It actually is neater. So when this swings out... Oops, the clamp's hitting. It will actually swing the gate right behind the pole. So from this, well, let's say there, it's going to fall off. Thank you. So... From this end we won't even see, <laughs> thank you Christine, we won't even see the gate barely from this way but so it, yeah it's a lot neater however we are sacrificing we're sacrificing one of the holes on our hinge plate well two actually we weren't using that one before either no. though were we so whether these two will be enough to support a heavy gate now admittedly now it's not going to be as wide as it used to be I kind of like that. Mm. What do you think? Well, I think it's going to be better for walking through. It won't be as intrusive. I agree. It'll get it out of the road. Because this is a fairly narrow walkway, if we had, you know, three inches of the gate taking up a little bit of extra space, if we're carrying boxes through to the shed, it may just get in the road. I think we'll try that. I reckon some bolts through here, given that it's going through three pieces of timber, should support the gate and it'll kick right back out of the road. Yeah, good. Mm. Nice idea. Now, with our new shorter gate design, that's what it's going to look like. So, I'm still going to put two bolts per board down the side rails, uh, even though there's a lot less chance of the gate sagging now that it's relatively narrow. It's only, I think, 900 mil or thereabouts. Um, but it is a very heavy gate still, and these boards, um, some of them are a little bit cupped. So I'm thinking I'll put two bolts that way, one, you know, approximately a third, maybe a little bit more, so it looks balanced. Um, and that'll keep these side rails nice and flat, um, whereas the centre boards, they won't be able to cut because they'll be uh, sandwiched between the uprights. So it's going to look uh, over-engineered, but most things I build are over-engineered. There's going to be lots of bolts through it. But uh, it'll it'll stop even the biggest dog, and I think it should look kind of nice, especially when we get the cross rail in there. So uh, yeah, now I've basically just squared it all up. I've got it clamped, and I can start drilling some holes and putting some of these bolts through. So I've finished bolting the gate frame together, the main parts. Coco's just doing a test walk. It's a shame we don't have a Labrador. We could get a lab report. 
Um, it's bolted up nicely. It's uh, very heavy, as I keep saying. And I was going to put a cross piece on it, both sides, but I figured with this width board on such a narrow gate that a wide board diagonal might look a bit funny. So I did actually find a slightly narrower board. I remember getting one out of this house. So, and that actually is just long enough to get two diagonals out of. So we just got to get our angles right whilst the, the gate is nice and square. And I'll brace it across diagonal one side, matching on the other side, uh, another six bolts, and then the gate is uh, complete and then we have to fit it to the post. Now, I have made a little bit of a an oversight perhaps here. Um, this corner is, I think this corner is going to be the bottom corner. I do have to notch a piece out of this gate, so I think that bolt will be taken out, but that's going to unfortunately leave that one not central to the remaining timber, and I like to have things central, but then again, we do have the brace coming up here, so another bolt in here might make it look quite nice. But yeah, we'll have to notch a piece out here. We'll wait until the gate's finished and we can stand it up and get some accurate, um, you know, mark an accurate uh, section to cut out. It's easier to kind of do that in situ rather than to measure it and transfer measurements across. Uh, okay, let's um, cut some angled braces and get that part of the gate finished. So now I've cut the cross braces. As you can see, they fit up quite neatly. I've just put a galvanised nail in to hold them nice and flush and clamp them up so that they're not sort of you know so they're sitting flush with the next board obviously I've got one on the other side too and I need to hold them sort of fairly uh, well together while I drill through them and bolt through those and then our basic gate is finished and we'll stand it up in the opening and see what we have to notch out and perhaps where the hinges are going to mount up Now that she's all bolted up, it was time to stand it in the opening and see what it looks like. It's going to go really well. I've, of course, I have to notch out the bottom yet, so it's not sitting right in the gateway. But it's going to um, look the part. I really like that look. It's a classic Australian sheep yard or, or shearing shed gate. Probably higher than you'd normally need for sheep, but then we don't have sheep here. We have dogs the size of horses. Don't we, Caesar? Don't we? Yeah. Anyway... How's that look? We'll go around and look from the other side. I've got the better side facing the inside of the deck because that's where more of the you know, visitors and that will see. This is sort of the, sort of the tradesman's entrance, if you like. Uh, but of course, it was too dark to see the timber from the other shop before. Uh, obviously, the bolts stick out a little bit longer than I'd like, and I'll trim them back with a grinder once it's all finished and bolted up securely. The timbers was probably a little damp when I bolted it together, so it may shrink a little bit, especially on a hot summer's day. So I'll just nip the uh, nuts up and, and just grind the end of the bolt off so they're flush and neat. And I'm really happy with that look. A little bit of a gap between that pole and the shed, which we may just put a little bit of trellis and maybe grow a little vine up there so it hides that gap. The dogs can't fit through there anyway, but uh, that's worked out really well. So I need to notch out that bottom corner. Uh, where we have one bolt through probably in the wrong spot but we'll adjust that and uh, see how the hinges are going to fit up back to this gate now as you can see I have notched out this corner I just cut it I've, I've cut all this with a handsaw by the way I believe my physio will be happy that it's good exercise for my shoulder uh, I don't know if I should tell him but yeah, it's been good I actually enjoy it and it feels like it's strengthening my shoulder I'm just doing bits at a time but anyway, the gate's finished. It's quite heavy, as I keep mentioning. Let's put it on the scales and see what it weighs. Okay, it's balancing there at the moment. Let's have a look at the scales. And if we can read that, it looks like 35 kilos. 35 kilos, that's, that's a lot of gate. 
that would be the strongest and heaviest gate this side of the black stump okay guys if my physio asks it was only a little garden gate it wasn't even a meter wide so that's cool all right let's see is it going to fit oh very good okay we just need to work out where the hinges are going to go it'll stand up on its own beautiful okay it's a bit tight to drill on this side of the post because the shed's in the road but i have in a recent deal a right angle drill very handy okay that's got the hinges attached we're nearly there I am going to trim the ends off a little bit and I'm going to drill two new holes and ignore the holes that are already in it because um, I want the bolts, particularly from the other side of the gate, to look even with the bolts that are already in there. So uh, we'll just go and do that in the shed and then we can, because these will just lift off now, as I hope the gate will. And we will need to grease these. They've actually got a, a ball bearing in there as well, so they should be able to take a fair bit of weight. But I'm pleased to get those on. It was a little bit awkward working behind that beam. I've been interrupted with a few showers today and it's actually quite cold. It's 9 degrees at the moment. It's about 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the evening. But 9 degrees in the middle of November in Australia is just crazy. Uh, okay, hinges are just about done. I've got them bolted to the posts. I've got them clamped there to the gate. I've drilled the holes on the, the extra holes I wanted to use. I've cut the hinge back flush. So it's starting to look really good. I've just got to put some bolts through those hinges and it should be right to swing. It's starting to get dark now, but have a look at this gate and I'm really wrapped the way those hinges have worked it so that the gate sits right back against the shed. It means we've got our full opening to get through and it swings beautifully. I have just need to have a latch on it and something, I've, I haven't trimmed these bolts back yet, uh, and something so that it doesn't slam back to the shed whether I just have a magnetic catch there or maybe a little peg at the bottom but uh, I'm very happy with that beautiful fantastic um, let's have a look from the other side a bit of noise going on there the dogs are playing with a bone at least they're kind of sharing it they're not fighting so how's the gate look from this side Let's just close it. I've got a nice old pad bolt at the shop that I can use to latch it. And now that stands out really good with the light on it. I'll step back a bit further without falling over anything. I've still got to clean up all my tools. But there we go. One successful, very heavy, very strong, almost uh, tank proof uh, gate. So I'll finish this video up here as we walk away from the gate, back down to the shed. I've got to put my tools away. Um, I've also got to give that gate just a coat of deck oil or something, just to, just to seal the timber. But, you know, that old hardwood, it's 130 years old. It would probably last for years in the weather as it is. Uh, but I'll, I'll treat it and uh, it will... That looks great back there, doesn't it? I'll, uh, it'll be here for a long time, probably longer than me. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.